sat on the edge of the bed in the operating theatre, blood is just going everywhere out of my cannula. I'm like, this is it, I'm gonna get fucking paralysed now. Baby's heart rate's dropping. Obviously you hear that and your heart just goes. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Hope you're doing well and thank you so much for choosing to spend this time with me today. I'm gonna be talking about my birth story. My birth didn't go how I planned. I don't think any birth goes how someone plans. It definitely has plans of its own. And I feel like I could film this video a hundred times over and it would just, it would just never be right. So I'm definitely gonna make a go of it today see how we get on. It's definitely going to have taken me this long to talk about it openly. I am six months postpartum now. I did find it quite a traumatic experience. Um, both myself, my baby and my partner all came away from it. I don't want to, I don't know. You'll see me struggle through this video. I just, I feel almost like you're not allowed to talk about it sometimes. Like, if you say that your birth was traumatic and it wasn't the worst thing ever, you're being over dramatic, and it's it's just a hard thing to talk about. Just if it didn't go right, I feel I, I don't know. You're gonna see me stumbling through this, I think. So I really am just gonna do my best, and I'm just gonna get started. I'm probably gonna be missing bits out. You could, like I say, you could film this a hundred times, and it's just it's not gonna be perfect to me. It's just not. So I'm going to be starting actually with my birth plan. So this is this is what I wanted. I went to my appointment. They said, you know, what is your birth plan? Uh, my birth plan was the dream birth. Obviously, it's going to be everyone's. And I think when it's your first birth, you're very naive. <laughs> so my birth plan was to be completely unmedicated. I didn't want any gas in air, no injections, definitely no epidural. That was like, I did not want the epidural. I wanted a water birth. I was open to a home birth, although towards the end we decided not to go for that and to go to the hospital in case anything went wrong. And thank goodness we did make that decision in the end. I really wanted to use hypno breathing and hypnobirthing instead of medication and that is breathing techniques. I did end up actually finding that really useful and I did use it even though I was in hospital. Uh, I don't know if I used it correctly but at, through every contraction I would just count in my head until it was over and I just don't even know how I would have got through it without doing that. I found it really really helpful. I was so focused on the numbers that I was counting. I don't know if you will ever find that one helpful, but I would definitely have a look at hypnobirthing. Um, see if you can just take away anything from it. So yeah, like I say, my birth plan was pretty much the dream birth. I wanted water birth, unmedicated. It was just gonna happen. It was gonna be magical, uncomfortable, but not too painful. Baby would come, I'd have this fantastic moment. And yeah, that was my birth plan. <laughs> and it did not happen like that at all. So I got to 41, uh, yeah, 41 weeks and six days, which is the furthest they kind of let you go being pregnant before intervening. You can opt to go past that time, but there are studies and I was advised that going past that time could really cause complications with birth even further complications than what actually did happen so I was advised to have an induction and that's what I did so on the 4th of July I went into hospital with my partner I had an induction at 1 30 and I had the pessary now the pessary wasn't supposed to bring me into labor it was supposed to just kind of get my body ready for going onto a hormone drip the next day so I was supposed to be going onto a hormone drip on the 5th of July and that was going to start my labor so I had the pessary in 1.30, went home and just chilled for the day. At about 9 p.m. that night, I started, I thought they were contractions. I started, we were, I can remember it. We were having a curry, eating pineapple. I was really wanting to just kind of bring it on naturally myself. And we were watching Pirates of the Caribbean, Return of Salazar, I think it's called. It was 9 p.m. and I started having pains. And I said to my partner, I think I'm getting contractions. And he was like, no, you're not. It's not, that's not what the pessary does. You're going to be going into labor tomorrow. You're going to get the hormone drips. So I was like, yeah, you're right. That is what we were advised. Went to bed, no, no problems, went to sleep. I woke up probably about four o'clock in the morning on the 5th of July. 
with bad pains, really bad pains. I knew I was having contractions. I just kind of laid there and breathed through them for about an hour. And then I woke my partner Luke up at 5 a.m. And I was like, we need to go to the hospital now. I'm in agony, we need to go right now. <laughs> so we got up straight away, went to the hospital. We got there between five and six. And I was only one centimetre dilated. Now, they normally send you away when you're anything below four centimetres dilated and you come back in when you're four centimetres. But they did keep me in. I don't know if that's because it was the pessary. I don't know if that's because I was in so much pain. I don't know if that's because I was really late in my pregnancy and they wanted to monitor me. I don't know why they kept me in, but they did. And I was in agony. So they gave me some liquid morphine which didn't help at all. <laughs> like, I didn't even feel it. I could have not taken it and would have been no better off. Um, and then they moved me up to what I think was a labour ward. It was just a ward. Um, there was only myself and one other woman there and she was just having like a checkup because she had twins, I think. Uh, so I don't really know what that ward was for, but I think it was like a labour ward or just kind of where they put people where they're trying to find like a room for them. I was in so much pain. All of my contractions were in my back. I was like doubled over on the bed, asking Luke to keep rubbing my back. Everywhere, everything he did was wrong. I was like shouting at him. He was starting to lose his temper a bit because I was being horrific. And I was like, I don't care what you say. Like I'm in so much pain. Uh, they gave me a pethidine injection and the nurse said, you're gonna need to lie down because this is gonna make you quite sleepy. So Luke went off for a bit, did whatever he did. I can't, I can't even remember where he went. So I lay down on the bed and I was like dozing from the injection, but I was still in so much pain. It wasn't very nice to be honest. You just kind of feel like you're in pain, but you can't really do anything about it. And it didn't last very long at all. I think it lasted about 20 minutes with me in that like dozy state. And then it was right back to where I had been. I was just in complete agony. And I was like, I cannot still only be one centimeters dilated. So a nurse came and she checked me and I, from six o'clock in the morning till 10 o'clock in the morning, had gone from one to six centimetres dilated. And she did say, you know, no wonder you're in so much pain, you're dilating really, really fast. So they went ahead and put me down in my own room with a midwife and that's where I was supposed to give birth in that room. The birthing pool was not free, so that was out the window. I'd already had medication, so that was out the window <laughs> and it wasn't induction that's not what I really wanted so birth plan it just this is kind of sidetracking from the story but I feel like a birth plan you're almost like shopping for your ideal birth it's like yes I'd like this 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 and this thank you very much and it's just not realistic it put a different vision in my head of what it was actually going to be like I remember speaking to someone after I'd given birth and she was like oh I'm gonna go and do my birth plan now and I was like yeah your birth plan's not gonna happen and they were like oh thanks <laughs> I was like no seriously like just your birth plan's not gonna happen and for my next one it's definitely gonna be more along the line of I want to feel listened to I want decisions explained to me not this like magical birth I'm not even gonna plan my birth at all just that I want to feel heard that I want to make decisions to be explain to me what is going on and if I can't make decisions then my partner gets to make decisions for me those are the things you want in your birth plan not some like magical fairy tale birth with birthing pools and home births that's great if you get that but that's just not important in the moment when it's all going wrong that's not what you need in your birth plan so back to the story anyway I was popped into a room with, mid with a midwife there was actually two there there was a midwife and a student and as soon as I got there they were like oh we're actually finishing our shift in a minute so I was like okay great <laughs> I'm just lay on this bed in so much pain still just breathing through it all at least I'm in a room by myself now like with a closed door not just a curtain around me so that did make me feel a little bit more secure their shift ended a new midwife came in and she she was really lovely she was really lovely um and I felt time in my head or time when you're giving birth is so warped so I think it was about maybe two o'clock when I was like I really need to push now and she was like okay we'll start pushing then that's absolutely fine so I was pushing and I was pushing for hours two or three hours oh my god it was horrific <laughs> I was getting nowhere I was exhausted I was changing positions constantly my contractions were so bad I felt like I could barely move 
was just counting all the time in my head. They gave me another pethidine injection, but it didn't even touch me this time. I was like sucking down gas and air. I felt like that wasn't really doing anything. I was more just like biting on whatever it's called that you like inhale through, through the pain. I was just biting down on that. My partner was like feeding me fruit pastels and giving me Lucozade to try and keep my energy up. And the whole thing now just seems like an absolute nightmare, to be honest. Um, and she, by by what I think was five o'clock, she was like, the baby's coming. I can feel him coming. You're almost there. Keep going. And I was like, is he here yet? Is he here yet? Is he here yet? I just wanted it over. And I kept saying I was so tired. The pain was in my back. It was explosive on my spine. And she was like, yep, he's coming, he's coming. This went on, like I say, for like half an hour. And then a surgeon came into the room and took one look at me and was like, baby's not going to come. We need to operate. And I just feel almost like, looking back on it, I feel almost lied to. I wish she just said to me, baby's kind of struggling to come. We're not sure if we might need to intervene. That's all I would have needed. I know she was probably just trying to keep my spirits up, but in that moment, I felt like I just wasted so much energy pushing and pushing and pushing for nothing. Like, he wasn't coming. He was not coming. So I do feel quite, I think you can tell, I feel quite angry about that. And that's why my birth plan is going to be so different next time. I want the truth. And I do not want people to try and make me feel better. I just want to know what is happening and what the situation is. So surgeons came in and they said we're going to need to do something now baby's heart rate's dropping obviously you hear that and your heart just goes and you're like i can't do it i can't give birth naturally this is all my fault i'm doing something wrong i'm not pushing right my body's not made for this it's a horrible spiral to be going down and they said to my partner go get changed into scrubs we're going to be taking her into what i presume was theater and I was so off my head by gas and air at this point, although I didn't really realise it then. I just was like delirious with tiredness as well. And they were like shoving all these forms in my faces saying, you're going to need an epidural. We're going to try and do an assisted birth, whether that's forceps or there's another one as well, but I can't remember the name of it. Um, and if that doesn't work, then I'm going to be doing an emergency cesarean. And I'm so tired that I just don't care and like I say they're shoving all these forms in my faces I just sign I just don't even care I'm like yeah whatever I don't care and they're like right you need to take all your piercings out I'm so out of it that I'm like trying to take all these piercings out I just can't do it I'm so tired I'm so out of it I can't get the clasps and my partner's trying to do it and it's it was a lot we got some of them out some couldn't come out and I was just like it is what it is I can't get them out just leave me alone so that was that now for the assisted birth, I got taken into theatre. They put a cannula in my hand um, so that they could put, I don't know, eye drips in or whatever. And they left the cannula open. So I was actually sat on the edge of the bed in the operating theatre. Blood is just going everywhere out of my cannula. My partner looks horrified. And I just don't care about anything in that moment. And it sounds horrific. I could have died in that moment and I just wouldn't even have cared. Like, you're so exhausted and tired and there's blood going everywhere and you're having contractions and it was horrific. It was really, really horrible. Definitely not my magical birth that I had dreamed of. Anyway, they noticed, they turned the cannula off and they were like, right, we're going to do the epidural now. You need to stay perfectly still. I'm like, how the hell am I going to stay still? I'm contracting so hard. I'm like writhing in pain on the edge of this bed. And I'm so, you hear horror stories about epidurals. I'm like, this is it. I'm going to get I'm paralyzed now. So they did the epidural. Luckily, that all went absolutely fine. And I've had no side effects from that whatsoever. And they were like, can you feel the contractions? And I was just like, oh, I don't know. I don't care. And they were like, well, you obviously can't because you're not reacting to them anymore. And I was just like, I just didn't care. Like, I honestly just can't say how much I just didn't care about anything anymore. So I lay down and I can barely remember any of this, to be honest, because I was so off my head from gas and air and the epidural and I'd had a pethidine injection. I'd had one previously and I'd had the liquid morphine. So I'd had all of the drugs. Um, I just, I was talking to the the woman sort of next to me who was at my head uh, the anaesthetist was there as well 
and then the midwife who'd been with me in the little room was suddenly by me and she was like right you're having a contraction you can't feel it but you need to push now and it's the weirdest thing trying to push but you can't feel your body you need to just like imagine that you're pushing <laughs> anyway baby was born they had done an episiotomy so they had made a large cut down there and they had used forceps to bring him out so it had been an assisted birth in the end uh, he had like a big mark down his head from the forceps which we were really worried about but it did heal within a matter of days so that was absolutely fine and then you just I didn't get that moment at all like he was born and it sounds horrific but I just again I was so tired they were like do you want to hold him I couldn't even lift my arms and I was just like no I don't want to hold him <laughs> I can't move I'm so exhausted and it turns out I'd actually somehow managed to get an infection in that room and it was it was ha acting fast on me I was being sick suddenly I was really dizzy I was really weak um and I had to stay in hospital for about three nights after that having antibiotic drips I was so ill from whatever infection I'd suddenly picked up from being in that room but I didn't get my moment thinking oh my wonderful baby tears didn't get that at all and I do feel really gutted about that now but I also feel like that's okay and it's never spoken about that you don't get that moment like if you don't get that moment you just don't care about your baby and that's not it at all now obviously I was relieved that he was safe but I was so tired I was suddenly getting really really ill really fast um oh yeah it was awful and my partner's face as well he'd been watching them do the cut and his he was white like he definitely had after effects after emotions from the birth same as I did baby also we think picked up whatever infection I had while I was in there because three weeks later we had to go back to hospital and he was on antibiotics so it really was a nightmare anyway they stitched me up I'd had a lot of blood loss as well so like I say they kept me in the hospital for three nights even that was terrible because you're I was so ill and I had to look after this baby all by myself and it's covid my partner Luke is only allowed in for two hours a day and it's awful for the first night I wasn't even allowed to pick Sebastian up because I was so weak the midwives thought that I would drop him so I had to like ring the bell anytime that something was wrong like he needed his nappy changing or he was sick because I was so ill I couldn't breastfeed and he wouldn't take to me or formula so he was classed as a reluctant feeder honestly everything that I could have gone wrong went wrong and this is probably going to be not very encouraging if you are pregnant and you are watching this but every single birth is different and I definitely want to get pregnant again and have baby number two with the knowledge that that birth is not going to happen to me again. I mean it might do but the chances of it going exactly like that are so so low. I may get a better birth, I may get a worse birth. At the end of the day I was completely fine in the end. Sebastian is completely fine. He's a thriving little boy and it was all worth it. <laughs> it was definitely all worth it but it has taken me a really long time to kind of digest everything that's happened I'm not even sure that I fully have there's bits that Luke says now and I'm like did that happen I don't remember that at all but just I feel like it is really important to look at negative or traumatic birth stories as well as positive ones when you're pregnant I definitely just looked at positive ones and had this perfect image on my head at how it was going to go it didn't go like that at all and I now really wish that I'd sort of looked at both sides of great births average births and ones that just don't go well so I could have mentally prepped myself for right this isn't going well this is probably what's going to happen now it is going to be okay in the end but in the moment like I say that's just not how I felt at all <laughs> but I am really looking forward to going through it all again <laughs> because I just I know it's going to be different next time so that pretty much wraps it up <laughs> I really hope that you've enjoyed watching this birth story I know it wasn't the perfect birth at all but rest assured yours is not going to be like this if you are pregnant mine next time will be different and yeah thank you so much for spending this time with me and I'll see you again real soon take care guys bye